Welcome back, Mr. Goodberry. The first Star Logistics Studio is fully equipped and ready to record. Welcome back to Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. This is episode 76. And if you're looking for the last two episodes, I got taken off YouTube because, well, sometimes that's how it goes. We use too much film from one location and they weren't happy about it. I disagree, but sometimes that's how it goes. If you're looking for it, though, we'll put a description down here. It's on an app called Rumble, which allowed us to upload it there without any issues. And you can find it on Twitter at Joe Goodberry on the First Star Logistics Twitter handle. They retweet all the videos that come out from Dave Lapham and Malik Wright and myself uh, throughout the week. So you can find it's a good app or a good uh, handle to follow First Star Logistics, not just for the giveaways and the prizes and all the fun, but because they, they retweet all their stuff and keep tabs on the new things that are coming out from this great channel. But we're in the home stretch. I'm going to try and be brief with this because ep ep this episode is going to be long. And it's gonna be good. And we're gonna talk about almost every draft prospect that the Bengals could presumably draft through all seven rounds because we are going through each position using Dane Brugler's The Beast. I'm not gonna go too far because I set it up in the clips that are gonna follow here. But yeah, if there's anyone we don't talk about, feel free to put it in the comments and you know, add one right at the end, and I'll, re I'll respond and give you my thoughts on those players if somehow I skipped over them. Uh, when we get to the end of this so without further ado here's the review and the setup for this year's nfl draft just two weeks away from the nfl draft and we should talk about players and the value and not just the value of the position but within the position each player and their projected draft positioning meaning hey i can like this guy a whole lot but i don't like him in the first round i don't like troy fatanu at 18 as an offensive tackle, but if I picked 28th, sure. If I picked 40th and he's still there, hell yeah. So that's a part of the draft process that I don't think we talk about enough. I think we just get pegged into, hey, you like this guy or you don't like this guy. Well, I like all the players if the value is correct. So let's use Dane Brugler's Beast Edition 2024. This is the top draft guide, in my opinion. I used to collect all the Mel Kuyper draft guides back in like 20. 2002 to 2008 or so and then once i met dane and figured out who dane was and got into the beast the last 10 years it's had to have been uh, i've been reading this and collecting this as part of the process but we're going to start with running backs we're going to skip right over the quarterbacks because for the cincinnati Bengals, we do not care so let's go right to the running backs page and i've gone too far and let's talk about or let's go to the rankings right here and say hey do we like Jonathan Brooks? And what, what I'm looking at here is where the grade and the projection of where these guys are going to go. That's what I want to focus on and say, give them a yes or a no. Would you take that for where the Bengals pick? So Jonathan Brooks, it's running back out of Texas, who's, in my opinion, I agree, the best running back in this class. But dealing with that injury, if he, if he wasn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he was fighting for a late first round argument. Easily top 10 in round two, but because of it, we're talking second, third round. So the Bengals picking 49th. Would that be too rich for the Bengals at 49? Probably. But if he was available in the third, that high end third, and what does that mean? He'll get to the 80th pick. I'm not so sure. I'm thinking this is more of the uh, 55 to 70 range, 55 to 75, definitely not hitting 80. But if it was the third, I'm into it. If it's the second round, I'm not into Jonathan Brooks. Blake Corum, second round or third round completely. No, thank you. I do not want Blake Corum in the third round. We're going to give him a full swipe there. Trey Benson in the third. I am completely into it. And the Bengals have two third round picks, 80 and 97. I'm thinking 80 for these guys. Would I take Trey Benson at 80? I would. I'd be all for it. Jalen Wright, I'm going to come back to him. Not sure I'd like him at 80. Marshawn Lloyd at 80. No, thank you. I'm out on that one. Braylon Allen. We're getting, I'll, I'll, I'll finish right then, right now. 80, I'm not so sure. But if 97, if he's still there, I'm into it. So he gets like a partial check. I'll kind of have the, uh, let me give him a, a check mark and a, it should be an X for the red, right? Yeah. 
this is going to look very pretty at the end. But so if he's there at 97, I'm into Jalen Wright. You'll get speed. You get explosiveness. Uh, but I think down to down consistency hasn't shown it yet. I would say the same about Trey Benson. I just some I like Trey Benson's uh, fit with the Bengals a little bit more. Uh, but I would be completely I'm, I'm splitting hairs here. I think either guy at 80 or 97, I would be completely for. And this is me with the value of running back being a little bit lower. I, I, I am into that uh, running back don't, doesn't matter team but Braylon Allen here in the third fourth round so if we're talking 97 if we're, if we're strictly thinking 97 or their fourth round pick for this I'm not in on Braylon Allen there I mean I am if it's the fourth I could accept it and see it I don't think he's a Derrick Henry to me he's more of a Brandon Jacobs which he was always a number two the thunder to the lightning and could be a, a goal line back. But I even know I never really loved Brandon Jacobs as a goal line back. I thought he took too mo- too long to gather speed and gather that explosiveness uh, in order to turn into a truly powerful runner, which is why I think Derek Henry being a freak that he is athletically speed and the power, especially when he was younger, uh, made him so dangerous. So I am not in on that right there. But Audric Estime, I am in on. And even though he ran a four seven his GPS data and everything that uh, you see on tape with the explosive runs out of shotgun. Also, I'm into Audrey Gessime, especially if we're talking 97 or their fourth round pick. Fourth round, I'm all over. Now, Bucky Irving, I am not into. While I think Bucky Irving will be good, I think he'll be Devin Singletary, let's say. I'm not sure that's what I want for the Bengals. And Fourth round, maybe. I'm saying fifth round, I'd be in on it if if Bucky Irving was still there in the fifth. Uh, but for him to be a smaller, not very fast guy, I mean, we're, we're talking 192. I just don't think he'd be on the Bengals' radar there unless it's very late. And we're talking a 4 five, five. You want to go against this Ravens defense, you better have speed and or power. And he really doesn't have either. But he makes guys miss. He catches the ball well. Uh, I think he can pass block. I think he'll be... Devin Singletary and uh, be a solid back. And he's one of the younger ones in this class at 20.7 years old. Ray Davis, while I really, really, really like him, him being damn near 25. And in the fourth round, I'm not into it. If it's fifth round, great. But we're, again, we're focusing on the round projection here from Dane. I'm not into it in the fourth round. Will Shipley, on the other hand, I am into Will Shipley. I think he looks a lot like Giovanni Bernard. And I think even though the Bengals have two guys already like this in the 5'10 to 5'11 role at 205 to 212, uh, I think he can be a pass blocker receiver and be a make you miss guy. And that 445 to me is appetizing for that type of guy. Uh, I think that's very good there. And I would take him fourth round. Again, I, this is a high end value here. Tyrone Tracy, a guy who grades out really well for us in our spreadsheet. And has upside as a receiver. He was a former receiver, 5'11", 210, and 448. He's 24 years old. Would I take him in the fourth round with that fourth round pick? I don't think I would. If it was fifth round, I'd be all over it. So it's 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 that bit of a line there where a lot of these guys, if it was a round later, like Blake Corum, I think I'd have to be fourth round, to be honest with you, before I'm into it. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd would have to be fourth or fifth round. S, uh, Braylon Allen would have to be fifth round. Uh, Bucky Irving would have to be fifth, Ray Davis would have to be fifth, fifth, and Tyrone Tracy would have to be fifth. But now we're getting into the fifth round of the projection here with Isaac Rendo. Fourth, fifth round, we're talking about a guy who's never carried the load, uh, but at six foot, 221, and with the explosiveness and speed that he has, I mean, it's a rare combo. I would be completely into it if we're talking our, our fourth or fifth round pick there. I'm all over it. Uh, Rasheed Ali, I have not watched at all. I will, I will skip over the few guys now that I've gotten to that where uh, I would not uh, have an opinion on Dylan Laub. I think that's how you say his name. Sixth round would definitely be into uh, third, third down back can catch, can block, uh, make a miss. That four five is about right for what you see. He's more quick than fast. Again, he's 24 and a half years old. We're talking about a six round pick. Just going to go over a few guys here that that also I think would fit Blake Watson, sixth, seventh round. Yes, I'm into it. Uh, Vidal in the seventh round, 100% into it. Jason McClellan could be an underrated guy here. We're talking seventh or, or priority free agent. That's what that PFA stands for. There was one other guy here, Michael Wiley, maybe the most underrated back in this class. 
And yeah, he's 23 and a half years old, but he's got good receiving uh, production and data. And when I watched him, I thought he was good at everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's a guy who turns out to be in a couple of years, a good number two running back or low end starter even. And we're talking priority free agent. I am 100% into that. Uh, one guy that I did not like at all was Frank Gore Jr. I mean, absolutely small, slow, and they gave him the workload. And I'm not into it at all. Even as a priority free agent, I'm not even worried about him. So that's the running back class. So with the value, that means I'm into Trey Benson, Jalen Wright, Audric Estime, Will Shipley, Isaac Arendo, and then the last guys in the sixth, seventh round as 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 pickups like Laub, Watson, Vidal, McCollin, and Wiley. Uh, so not as many guys as – and Jonathan Brooks, like, eh, if they take him in round two where the Bengals love to take their future RB1, scary. But at the same time, I think he's that good. All right, jumping to wide receiver on Dane Brugler's The Beast. And do we agree with the rankings? Not so much the rankings, but where they're projected to go here. Yes or no, that's the goal here. All right, starting at the top, Marvin Harrison Jr. first round. This is going to be easy for the receivers, I think. Yes, sir. Give me Marvin Harrison Jr., no doubt about it. How about Malik Neighbors? Yeah, give me that. I'm going to make this line a little bit bigger. Roma Dunze, first round, no doubt about it. Brian Thomas Jr., first round. I'm more like yellow on this, if we're going to put like an in-between. I, I would. I would. But there is some risk to his profile. And now, anytime you get a guy from a big program that has other good receivers, some of his production profile is going to be a bit gray. You're going to have to take some leap of faith on it. Uh, and remember, for the Bengals here, so at 18, would I take Brian Thomas Jr.? It'd have to be the right scenario. It'd have to be... All right, a lot of these offensive linemen, a run on offensive linemen happened. They're just not there. And then the top two corners, in my opinion, Terry and Arnold and Quinion Mitchell, who we'll get to, I would take at 18. But so they're gone now. And now Byron Murphy's gone as well. So I Thomas is on the list of like 22 guys I'd like the Bengals to draft, but he's probably number 22. I like him, but I don't know if I need him. I don't know if that's what I have to have. And I'm going to say the same for Lad McConkey as a first second round guy i do think he's a wide receiver two at best i think he'd be best in the slot and i know these are all people that love lad will say oh he could be more than that he can be antonio brown or emmanuel sanders or someone along those lines and maybe he can be uh, i don't know that that's what i need for the bengals at 18 for sure not right we're red on 18 but if he's there in round two at 49 i'm green there so i'm gonna start using yellow for the in-between guys of I would not take him at, in the first round, but I would in the second because the Bengals don't need a number one type of wide receiver. Now, A.D. Mitchell, I'm into. I think A.D. Mitchell on film looks awesome. I think it looks a lot like Devontae Adams uh, running routes and ball skills, deep ball skills. I think where he struggles is some of his consistency. There were some games you watch and it's like, yeah, he got he got three catches, but there's Texas, again, there's three probably draftable receivers there, and they were force-feeding Xavier Worthy a lot, and we'll get to him. Uh, but we're not at 18, right, for Mitchell. I don't think he goes that high anyway, so maybe I'm more yellow. Maybe I lied a little bit about that, and he should be more yellow, because. Uh, but I would at 49 completely. Keon Coleman is interesting. Second round here. Doesn't have the tested speed that you would look for. If he did, we're talking about one of the younger guys here. He's not even 21 years old yet. If he would have ran even a four five one, I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. So really do that four six one, a tenth of a second. Is that really going to kill him and knock him off of the list when his GPS data looks good on multiple different sources from the combine to guys that do the this this type of data the companies and that do this uh data throughout the season say no, he's one of the more athletic receivers. I would be into Keon Coleman because of the athleticism that is measured rather than tested here. So I'm talking about the GPS stuff. And I think when I look at him, I compared him to TJ Hushmanzada. I think in the slot, he can be really good. And he hasn't played it a bunch, so maybe there's a little bit of a leap of faith there. But at 6'3", 213, you get a guy with that size into the slot, let him block a little bit. He's got good ball skills, good possession receiver, will box guys out, will use his strength to go up and get the ball. Um, I like Ian Coleman. I don't think he's T. Higgins. Like some people say, well, he could be our T. Higgins replacement. I don't think he's that. I don't think he's a guy that, 
and while T, T Higgins did run slower, same with Tyler Boyd in round two. Is he more Tyler Boyd down the spectrum or T Higgins on the spectrum? I would say more Tyler Boyd side, which is still really good player. And in the second round, I would take that. Now, Roman Wilson in round two, I am completely out on. This is our first guy here that I'm like, yeah, completely second round. No, thank you. And I'd like Roman Wilson, but we're talking about an already an older guy who's going to be 23 years old, had a late breakout age, is strictly a slot guy. And even though he's, you know, 185, even though he ran a sub 4-4 to 4-3-9 there, I don't think he's that deep threat on the outside. I don't think he's going to win that way. He's going to struggle. <clears throat> struggle versus press, struggle on the line. I think you get him in the slot. He's a willing blocker, which I do like for a guy that's smaller. Uh, I think he's a slot guy, a speed slot. And there's value in that. But would I take that in round two? I would not. I think there's much better options. And I think we get to it right here. Ricky Purcell at 49 or 80. And I think he's more likely because he's got that second, third round uh, grade there. I think it's more likely he's closer to 49. I think Purcell... What I, at first, I didn't like him. I went back and watched a, a few more clips. Much quicker and faster than I expected. A really good body control in the air. And I like that for a guy that is more than a slot. So a lot of times with slot guys, they don't have the deep ball skills. They don't have the, the ability to track the deep ball and adjust their body and control their body uh, down the sidelines and deal with guys, lean, corners leaning into them and still adjusting and and. and catching the ball in, in traffic. And I thought Ricky Pearsall showed that more than enough to say, okay, maybe he can be a number two. Maybe he is not just a slot guy. And he's going to be older. All the reasons I knocked Roman Wilson, he's not the biggest dude either at 191. I just think he is much more quick, much more explosive, much more crisp in his routes. And I think I would give him the chance. And plus the projections a little bit later. When I see that second, third, I'm much more into it. If it was Roman Wilson in the third, I'd be much more inclined. Uh, to like him. Surprise here after the 4-2-1 at the combine is Xavier Worthy not projected as a first round pick. I He comes out in our spreadsheet really low. I When I watched him on tape, I thought he struggled uh, with his hands. I thought he struggled through contact. I thought he struggled uh, in contested situations. All reasons that really scared me for a guy who's really small. But we're talking second, third round. If he's Deshaun Jackson in the second, third round, then I'm into it. I'm not into it in the first round. In the second and third, yeah, give me Xavier Worthy. Give me that elite blazing speed with the returnability. And he is a tough runner. Like, he didn't shy away from contact and just run out of bounds. He would try to run through or jump over guys. He just was 165 pounds, and he'd get he'd get blasted, to be honest with you, because he's just he, he's not trying to avoid it. I think uh, in the NFL, he may have to learn how to uh, avoid some of those hits just a little bit more. Uh, Malachi Corley, second, third. I am not super high in Malachi Corley although I can see the vision. So he's like a poor man's Debo Samuel. I think you'd want to put him in the slot and clearly, but the bonus of giving him some uh, workload from the backfield, giving him some handoffs and touches, screens that allow him to run after the catch, all that is fine and good, but is he ever going to develop into a full-time wide receiver three? I think we've seen these guys and they've routinely come up short in the NFL I'm definitely not in the second and third. If he's there in the, if he's there at 97 for the Bengals third round, yeah, I can get into it. Uh, I'd be much more comfortable in the fourth round. Now, Troy Franklin here is the next guy. Second, third, you're kidding me. I mean, he comes out graded for us after Harrison, Neighbors, and Adunze. Troy Franklin is the next one. And I think he's got the speed and quickness you look for in a wide receiver one. He's probably more of a wide receiver two speed and quickness of a Emmanuel Sanders I talked about earlier. But that speed is real when he gets that ball in his hands and he turns up field in one corner, goes for his ankles and misses it, and pew, Troy Franklin is gone, and he's 176 pounds. So we're talking about very similar to Xavier Worthy here where these guys got to be careful with contact, be careful on the line, uh, dealing with press. But I think Franklin does enough and has enough of a full skill set to run a routes at all three levels of the field that should make him at least a wide receiver two in the NFL. Now, I will say, on tape, uh, the data loves Franklin and almost everything, but on tape, he is rough in terms of the depth of his routes, the consistency of his routes, consistency of his releases, uh, consistency in a lot of ways. Hands, uh, the way he catches with his hands or body catches or tries to trap the ball. Uh, you know, I've even seen him like flip his hands as he's trying to go catch it. And I'm like, that looks like John Ross stuff. Uh, and that scares me. But these are all things that could be worked through. He's still young, 21 years old. Uh, he's got 
the upside definitely from a physical speed explosive standpoint plus his his high end plays are like yeah he's a natural receiver Jalen Polk being the next in the third round and I love these guys I'm in agreement with a lot of these coming up here in the third round I like Jalen Polk in the third round I don't know that he'll ever be anything more than a wide receiver two uh, and even then, I think it's more of a low end wide receiver too. I see him more as like a Gabe Davis type wide receiver too, which is fine. But do I need that for an offense? Like I think even for the Bills, always wanted to upgrade that position even when Gabe Davis was there. So I would take it. But third round, I feel like that's more fourth round. I'd be at 97, yes, 80, no for Jalen Polk. Xavier Leggett is an interesting one because he is – one of the older prospects in this wide receiver class, 23 and a half years old. There's a great story on him and why it took him so long. He speaks very well about it. And you, when you hear it, you're like, yeah, okay. I can see why it took him a, a little bit longer to develop. And he's six, one, two twenty run one and ran a four, three, nine. We're talking power, man. I, I tweeted out. He's got that wagon on him because he does. When you see him catch that ball and turn up field, guys are bouncing off his thighs. He's, he runs with power and speed. I do think his routes are rough. I think his ball tracking is rough. I think you have to manufacture him some touches. Uh, I think he's guys are in his hip pocket consistently in coverage, and it's because he's not very deceptive, not very clean in his routes. I'm sorry, but I don't know that he's ever going to be anything more than wide receiver three that struggles in a lot of areas to consistently get open and consistently make plays, even in the third round. Now, if it's, I may say, fine, I can take it at 97. But even at 80, I'd be like, oh, I don't see uh, I don't see him ever turning into anything more than a wide receiver three. And I think in the third round, I'd still like a little bit more upside than that. Now, Malik Washington's an interesting one because he's small at 5'8", 191. That's good density. And running a 4'4'7 at that, he makes a lot of plays downfield. And he makes a lot of plays from the slot. He makes He can run after the catch. He's got great ball skills, torquing his body in the air, catching it behind him. I think Malik Washington has a really good shot. If you're drafting him in the third round and saying, all right, he's our wide receiver three, I wouldn't be surprised if he became a really, really good uh, wide receiver three. But at 23 and a half years old, a little bit older than I thought originally, uh, that knocks him down just a little bit. I would not be targeting him in the third round. So I right there, I'm like, I like the guy, would not target him. And that's the same with like Brian Thomas Jr. Would not target him in the first, would not target Lad McConkey in the in the first round maybe in the second ad mitchell not in the first but maybe in the second polk would not in the third uh but maybe in the fourth malik washington not in the third but i would in the fourth round devontae walker's an interesting one he's got the third fourth round he is an outside vertical speed he may have the gabe davis uh comparison as well i think that's all he's going to be in the nfl is an outside number three wide receiver so say you've got a really good number one and you've got a good slot well, give me Devontae Walker as the third guy. So say uh, you ended up with, uh, uh, in the Bengals case, Jamar Chase, Brock Bowers in the first round. So that's going to be your one and two now. And I need a speed outside guy to alleviate some of this pressure. Devontae Walker in the third, fourth round? Oh, yeah, I'm into that. I think he could be exactly that and be a downfield threat and uh, and fulfill that, uh, fill that role really, really well. The guy I'm going to go yellow here is Jermaine Burton because on tape, you really like him. He's got the speed. He's got the quickness. He's got the ball skills downfield. can play the slot. can play outside. He's got the versatility. He's probably a second-round pick if he didn't have these these flags on him that you read about in, every, in all of these profiles where he may even go even later. He might be a nut job. I'm not, it's not for me to say, but it sounds like there's a lot of scariness on him. Now we're saying third, fourth round for Brendan Rice. I am all over it. And yes, he's a bit clunky. He looks like he runs his, his routes with some big ass hands. You should see these big white gloves and like they're moving faster than his legs are. I think his release package needs some work. There's some plays where I'm watching. I'm like, you are not Jerry Rice's biological son because you should not be mistracking that deep ball, man. This should be in your DNA. But yet I still like him. Watch the two lane game from uh, two years ago, or I guess calendar year ago in the bowl game where they're just force feeding him the ball and he's coming back and making catches in front of corners and keeping his feet in and they're throwing him fades and he looks fantastic. And he may have to move into a slot with that four or five speed, but at six, two, two Oh eight up to two ten, that's good size in the slot. And I think he could be a really good slot receiver to a low end wide receiver too. Maybe he's more of like a Brandon LaFell in the NFL, but I think at times that's a really good number three. And I would take that. Uh, for Brendan Rice, if we're talking 
third, fourth round. So we're saying 97 or the fourth round pick. Yeah, I'm into that. Jalen McMillan, same thing. I think he's a slot guy with added versatility. When you get a, up to a 447 in the slot, that's a little bit more explosiveness than, than you typically can get if you're looking for a big slot. And he and Brendan Rice are very similar. You're, you're, you're losing 10 pounds with McMillan. And you can see it too in his profile. But he can wiggle after the catch. He can move after the catch, make guys miss. They use him as a um, wildcat quarterback, and he was effective at doing that. He's a willing blocker. Uh, I, I compare him to a Marvin Jones in the slot. So I, the same way Marvin was in, in terms of a bit of a robotic, but athletic and micro movement athleticism to make guys miss after the catch with a little bit of McMillan was a slot guy at Washington. And I think he could be an outside. It's like in the Rams offense. I think McMillan would be awesome for the Bengals. Probably strictly a slot can do a little bit more than Boyd did as an outside receiver. And especially if you're running bunch sets or closer, uh, tighter packages to the line uh, with your receivers, I think that would work a lot for him. Now we're getting to Javon Baker, who I really, really, really like. He's got good size, 6'1", 202, a 4'5", 4, 4. So again, his not the speed explosiveness the way he tested. Had he tested really well, I bet he's a, talk about as a second round pick. He's where Roman Wilson to a Xavier Worthy probably is in this chart. He did not test well. All of his GPS data, whether that was at the Senior Bowl or throughout the season, looks good for him. I think he looks like a wide receiver too. And at worst, a very, very good wide receiver three. So yeah, I'm into Javon Baker here. We're talking fourth round. If you can be a very good wide receiver three, I think the mat the value matches what I'm seeing on tape. We're going to speed it up just a little bit here because we're, we're in the fourth, fifth round. I like Cohen. I think we got a small slot guy with some speed. Ran a 4.38, but he's 168 pounds. We're talking fourth round here. Johnny Wilson, the exact opposite, who is 6'6, 231, and a 4.52. I would take him in the fourth, fifth. It even say, hey, man, you want to play uh, a tight end for us? We would take that. Luke McCaffrey, fifth round. I'm into Luke McCaffrey. I think he can be a very good slot receiver. Despite his advanced age, we're talking fifth round here. I don't have a problem with that. Todd Washington, same thing as a slot. Uh, give me that. Couple other guys here that I really like Jalen Coker from Holy Cross. This could be this year's Andre Yosivash. Outside guy with good ball skills, good deep ball skills. Only ran a four or five, seven. Didn't test like Yoshi. Uh, so maybe he doesn't have that explosiveness. But at the same time, I think Josh Sifa, same thing. Prior to free agent to seventh rounder. He's got some character flags in his background, but at the same time, when you watch him on tape, you see them forcing him the ball and giving him the ball in all these different situations. He looks like he can play. He looks like a, a fine option if we're talking seventh or priority free agent, if it gets that late. There's a few other guys I plan on watching soon here. I want to see Anaya Smith, I think is how his, his name. Another guy that I was recommended to watch was Anthony Gold. So I will try to get to them over the last two weeks before this is over and see how I feel about them gold being in the fifth round. Interesting. But a lot more green here than red. The only guys I really wouldn't like where their projected value is Roman Wilson, Malachi Corley, and Xavier Leggett. And that, those are going to be three guys a lot of people like. And then the guys I'm just not into as much for the value of where they're at, Jermaine Burton in the third, fourth. I'd be scared. Malik Washington in the third. No thank you. Jalen Polk in the third. Not interested. And A.D. Mitchell in the first. Not interested. Lad McConkey in the first. Not interested. Brian Thomas in the first, I'm going to keep it as yellow. So you give me Pearsall in the second, third, Xavier Worthy in the second, third, Troy Franklin in the second, third, Devontae Walker in the third, fourth, Brendan Rice, Jalen McMillan, J uh, Javon Baker, Jacob Cohen, or Johnny Wilson in the third, fourth, fifth round. Lock it in. I'll take those any day. Moving on to tight ends. And of course, we're going to start with Brock Bowers. Would you take Brock Bowers in the first round? Yes, sir, I would. Let's clear that. Whoops. No doubt about it. Second, third round. We're jumping completely over the second round. And would you take Jatavion Sanders in the second round? I would not. Would I take him in the third, though, at 80? I would. I'd love him at 97. Uh, but for now, I'm going to put him red because if he's number two tight end, I'm expecting that means he goes in round two. I guess we'll have to see if he goes in round three or not. If round three, then I'm much more inclined. So maybe that's more yellow. But if we're saying second tight end off the board, I am out of it. Uh, Theo Johnson, third round pick. I'm out on Theo Johnson in the third round. I think he's upside of a tight end two. 
and up to round four, I guess through round three into round four, I don't want to take a tight end to upside guy. I want to still play within the sandbox of the few guys in this class, the very few guys in this class that I believe have tight end one potential. So I don't want to take Theo Johnson in the third. And the same goes for Jared Wiley. While I like both of these guys in the fourth round, and maybe that means pick 97, maybe these guys will be there at pick 97, and then I don't have a problem with it because we're talking about a compensatory pick and adding a guy that I think all three of these guys could be 500 to 700 yard receivers. And you have Jamar Chase. We may need our, our receiver two and three. We don't know who they are. So maybe I'm valuing a tight end one more than I should, but I would not take those guys at those spots. Now, Cade Stover, I would not take in the third at all, but in the fourth round, I definitely would. So 97 in the fourth round, I would for Cade Stover. If we're saying eight, pick 80, because let's say Jatavian Sanders goes at pick 60, and then Theo Johnson and Jared Wiley go at uh, 70 and 75. And then Cade Stover is now the next best one at 80. I'm out. I, I, I'm not interested. I'll wait, especially with the next guys that are on here. But at 97, I'm open to it, and depending on how the board falls. So the next guy I'm green on completely is Ben Sinnott. I'm talking, I think Ben Sinnott's going to be a tight end one, or at least has that potential. I think a low end tight end two, high end tight end one. Uh, got everything I, I need out of that position. Brings the toughness, the tenacity. He's, he's not even 22 years old yet. Good speed and athleticism. Can make guys miss. Can run after the catch. I dig it. I'm in on uh, Ben Sinnott in the fourth round. I'm in on Ben Sinnott in extreme cases in round two. I would love him in round three completely. If you're saying I can get him in round three, lock it in. I want it to happen. Please, Bengals, make that happen for me. But I don't want to sound too desperate there. Do I sound too desperate for a tight end? Tight end thirst is real. Tanner McLaughlin, like him. Do I like him in the fourth? Mm, not sure. Fifth? Yes. I'm going to stay green here because I do think he's more of a fifth rounder. So if that comes true, I'm for it. Tip Ryman in the fifth. I'm for it. A.J. Barner in the fifth. I think he can block. I think he can be a solid tight end, too. I'm for it. Jaheim Bell. I'm going to highlight this in blue, meaning, fuck yes, give me Jaheim Bell in the fifth, sixth round. Fifth, sixth round? Oh, yes. You just cut these noises. <laughs> just cut the noises because we don't need this to go in all the wrong directions. Eric All, fifth, sixth round. Yes, sign me up. So, like, if you see this, this is much different than the other positions we've done so far, where it's like value is meeting the talent in a lot of ways for me. I'm not like, I like Jatavion Sanders. Can I get him in the third? I'm in. Theo Johnson, Jared Wiley, that high? No. Kate Stover, that high? Meh. But the rest of these guys, we're talking, if if this is, these are all the draftable tight ends, if that's it, Dallin Holker in the sixth, nah, in the seventh, sure. So I'm I'm not too far off on that. I'm okay with Brevin Spain Ford. I just want to make sure we get to the end of this before. I, and, and then the rest are just whatever. So if you're saying that the value is, and we're only going to end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 to 14 drafted tight ends, not every team's going to get one. Half the teams are going to get one. So maybe these guys get pushed up a half a round. That's happened to the Bengals how many times the last couple of years? But you're telling me I can get a lot of these guys in the fourth and fifth rounds, potentially sixth round for Jaheim Bell and Eric Hall? Sign me up completely. I'm for it. It goes from, hey, I really you know, like a few guys in this class too, you know, this class isn't very good. The class isn't very good if these guys start going in round two. If Theo Johnson and Jared Wiley go in round two, like Luke Schoonmaker last year, like Drew Sample for the Bengals years ago, I am out. I'm throwing up if that happens. But the same thing, Kate Stover in the third, ugh, kill me. But if these guys go in the fourth round, fifth round, oh yeah, high fives all around. We are partying on day three of the draft. Next position group is offensive tackles, and it's a great class. So let's uh, jump in. Would you take Joe Alt? Of course I would. And again, I got to clear those. Of course I take Joe Alt and Olu Fashionu. Learning how to say his name in the first round. I would take Tally Fuanga in the first round. After that, I think we have to make some decisions, and we have to talk about J.C. Latham, who did not test. He's listed as the third offensive tackle. I think there's a lot of smoke to the reason why he didn't test is that he's expected to go top 12. And if that's the case, I understand it. 
And if that's the case, he is worth the pick because looking back at this, and I, I've laid out the data that says the guys that don't test are taking an extra risk on those guys. A bit of an unknown shot in the dark when you draft them. But the guys that have succeeded and have become pro bowlers out of that bucket are typically guys that go in the top 12 to 15 that knew they were going there the entire time and knew they didn't have to test. And maybe it's the Titans. Maybe it's the Chargers trading back. Maybe it's the Giants, whoever you, you want to throw out there that say, all right, at nine, at 10, the Bears, we're going to take you and uh, and don't worry about it. You know, you're you're secure. We don't want you testing like a Dewan Jones or an Orlando Brown Jr., and now you're a third round prospect. So would you would I take them at 18 for the Bengals without the testing after they have drafted Cedric Obway without testing, with te drafting Billy Price without testing, Jackson Carmen without testing? It scares the shit out of me. And maybe I'm biased because of that. And I can't get over it. Because on film, I like JC Latham. And in fact, everyone that I know that's O-line centric evaluators. They like J.C. Latham, so it makes sense that he would go top 15. So I'm kind of a yellow there, where in certain scenarios, yes, I would take Latham. Like, if you're telling me all Fashionu and Fuanga are all gone, and I have to choose between J.C. Latham and Marius Mims, I probably lean Mims. But if Mims is gone, then yeah, I'm taking Latham over Guyton. I'm taking Latham over Troy Fatanu. So... That's where I'm at. Marius Mims, would I take him in the first round? I would take him in the first round. I would not take Tyler Guyton in the first round. I think he's got a lot of issues still in his game, I think, and I can make a much greater line, I think. Um, let's see if that works. Okay. <laughs> uh, he scares me a little bit. I'm, I'm happy to see that he's only 21.9 years old. We had him originally said, I want to say, a 23.2. So whatever correction there is, uh, Dane's got the best age uh, database in here. We usually wait for that. But we thought we had that. We did have, have a note saying uh, verify, please, on that. So he's a little bit younger. That helps his his chance for development. He's six foot eight, three twenty two, long arms, great wingspan. He's got the size and the movement ability. I think he is a right tackle. Uh, he is worth like if I'm sitting there at thirty five and I want a high upside offensive lineman, Tyler Guyton all the way. I would be completely for it. Uh, but moving on, Kingsley Suamatea, I would take. See, that is a straight line. There we go. In the second round. I think he's got he represents very similar upside. Uh just under 6'5, 326. He's got good bulk to him. Tested well. Got the length, got the the, the mash you're looking for. And he's 21.2 years old. It's a young offensive tackle class at the top. After these guys, we're gonna start dipping into some of these guys that are much, much older. Uh, not so much Patrick Paul, though. Round two, three projection. And that remember, this is where we're focusing on the projections here round two and three what i take them at 49 i would not but our grading sheet says i'm wrong our grading sheet says despite seeing on film the various ways he loses and the consistency issues you also see a lot of good pass pro on film and you also see him being tested a ton on film and he's a fifth year senior and still only 22 and a half years old he's got experience and he's still young there may be some upside there I'm not in on round two at 49, but if you're telling me there's a chance at 80, yes, I am in on Patrick Paul at 80. And this is going to represent a very strong offensive tackle class. As you can see, we're already in on most of these guys. If Guyton was there at 49, I'd be interested. So that there is even like, I could probably go yellow on him. Brandon Coleman, second, third. I'm more indifferent on him. I believe the Bengals have a visit with Brandon Coleman. So we'll see how that goes. If they're looking in the second, third round, Roger Rosengarten, I am in on second of the round, like 49, I would consider it with him. He's got good upside. He's still young. He's not even 22 yet. Uh, 6'5", 308, good athleticism. When you watch him on tape, I expected him to be the much lesser of the two in terms of uh, Troy Fatano and himself. And I came in a lot of games thinking like Roger Rosengarten is good and maybe a better tackle prospect than Troy Fatano, who I think is a better guard. And Dane's got him listed as guards also, so we'll get to that. But Rosengarten, as a second, third round option, not many starting tackles come out of those rounds. I think he could do that. I think he could be one of them and be at least a Spencer Brown level starter, which is a quality starting right tackle uh, with some upside. And I, I definitely see that with Rosengarten, who is a fourth year junior coming out of Washington. A lot of true pass sets in that offense. 
what you see on film, you should feel pretty comfortable that what you're going to get. And to me, that's a solid starter. So second, third round, I am in on that. Blake Fisher as well. I think Blake Fisher, third round, if you're telling me second round, I don't feel as comfortable. But third round, yes, I think there's a chance you can get these starters, these guys to turn into starters in these areas. Uh, I don't know if he'll hit it. He's a bit over aggressive and over his toes at times. But again, we're talking right tackle third round. I just need a 50-50 shot there. And I think he's at, if Blake Fisher would give you like a 60 to 75% chance of him being a starting right tackle in the NFL. He was, before Joe Alt, he was the guy uh, at Notre Dame on that offensive line. And I think there's a chance that he can be a much better pro in the NFL uh, than he was in college and, and continue that. So now we get to the point where I'm I'm – and different on a lot of these guys. For a third round there, I could even point this red and say that Kieran Emadigaji, I think I'm saying that right. I'm kind of out on in the third round. I'm going to start being out on a lot of these guys because I don't believe you can find starters once you get past round three for sure. Christian Jones, even in the fourth, I'm not interested. Uh, he's older. He was never really even good. He's got great size and length and all of that, but I'm not, like when you watch him, I'm just not into it. He's 24 years old already. Same thing with Emadigaji. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. Kanan Wallace, again, 24 years old. Javon Foster, maybe. Like, yeah, sure, fourth, fifth round. I'm only expecting him to be a backup anyways. But there's some other guys here late that I'm thinking, like, maybe I can get something out of, like, Frank Crum. Uh, other than that, maybe a Garrett Greensfield. Really not much going on here once you get to these later. I'm looking for a starter or potential future starter at right tackle. These are just bonus players if you get to day three, so... Keep me with Joe Alt and Olaf Fashionu, uh, Telly Fuanga. If they take J.C. Latham, I'll understand and I will get it. Marius Mims, I'll take it. Uh, Kingsley Suamate in round two. Patrick Paul in round three. Roger Rosengarten and Blake Fisher in round three. Sign me up. This is why I like this class because I think there are so many of them, as long as they don't get pushed up too far, there are so many of them that there should be a value pick in rounds two or three, the closer we get to the draft. I believe that. If you would ask me a month ago, I'd have said, I don't like anyone who's there at 49. Now it looks like we may actually have some of these guys available at 49 or even pick 80. Okay, we'll do the interior offensive line. Dane has them broken down between guards and centers, of course. And we'll start with the guards and then move over to the centers. Neither are immediate needs for the Bengals, but I could see them drafting one of each. I could see them drafting a guy to play left guard in year one and then move to right tackle in year two, like the First two guys are on Dane's interior offensive line list here are offensive tackles in college. So let's start with them and say, would we take Troy Fatano? Now the, the debate here and the an interesting part of this is, do I consider this? All right, would you take them at guard here? Or do I use my knowledge of saying, hey, the Bengals may see him as a tackle also. I think I'll, I think I'll go with that direction. Would I take Troy Fatano in the first round so uh, it's tough already because I already said I would not at tackle. If he's only a tackle, then no. If I think he can play guard, then yes. If I think he can beat out Cordell Volson at left guard in year one, then yes. Give me Troy Fatano at 18 and understand that I'm okay taking an interior offensive lineman. Personally, me, I am okay with it. Are the Bengals is where it gets tough because I, they have, they have taken Billy Price. They would have taken Frank Rag now. And they drafted Kevin Zeitler, all within the last, man, it's already 12 years ago. But they have taken an interior offensive lineman in the first round, more than they have defensive tackle. So, like, is it that crazy that they, they could see one of these guys, a Jackson Powers Johnson, a Graham Barton, a Troy Fatanu, as a first-round pick? I don't think it's crazy. And if you're telling me he can play left guard, then let's do it and upgrade that position and go in with five good starting offensive linemen, at least week one. I'm into it. I'm down for that. Jordan Morgan is interesting. I didn't know he was going to be listed as a guard for some people. Uh, I did see the 32-inch arms. I thought a lot of people still had him as a tackle. There are some of these guys out there like Caleb McGarry that are 6'5 and have the 32-inch arms. I think McGarry might have uh, shorter arms than Morgan, who's just a hair. He's 32 and 7 eighths, just a hair under 33, which 33, I'll take that all day at tackle. I think most of those guys can survive at that position. Uh, with that size, if they're good tech technicians. But I think Morgan does have some number one upside, even though he's, he'll be a 23-year-old rookie. Uh, I am kind of definitely not at 18, right? Like, no, at 18. Second round, 
Is he there at 49? I would take him at 49. So I'm inclined to go green here because, I, man, if he goes in the first round as a guard, I don't see it. How is he first, second round as a guard? Now, if you're saying he's a tackle, he can go in the first. Same with Troy Fatano. If you're saying he's a tackle, he can go in the first, then I'm out. But as a guard, I'm interested in round two. Makes it tough to, to separate these. Now, a guy who will be a guard all the way or center, Cooper Beebe, second round. I think Cooper Beebe is absolutely good. I think he would come in and beat out Cordell Bolson year one. And potentially, I think he's got Pro Bowl upside, multi-time Pro Bowl upside for Cooper Beebe. He's not even 20. He'll be 23 as a rookie. Uh, so you should get a solid starting base from him year one with decent upside. Christian Haynes, I was sad to see, is 24 years old already. Second, third round. So would I take him in the second? I would not. He grades well enough that if we're saying third round, then I'm, I'm into it in the third round. I would not take him at 49. I would completely take him at 80 and have no problems with it. Now where I'm going to start to separate a little bit is Dominic Pooney. The, I think he ble believe he's played tackle and projects more as a guard with 6'5", 313, 33 and a 3 eighths inch arms. He is 24 years old already. And we're saying second, third, I'm out. I would barely consider it at 80. At 97, I would. So if we're saying second, third, meaning four, between 49 and 80, no, I can't do it. I can't draft that guy there either. I can same, I'm feeling the exact same way with Isaiah Adams at guard. He's going to be 24 years old as a rookie as well. Now, Christian Mahogany, who is also older, he'll be 20, he'll turn 24 his rookie year later in the season. I actually think he's very, very good. And if we're saying third, fourth round, so not pick 97 and fourth round pick, yeah, I'm in on that. I think he can come in and beat Volson as a fourth rounder. If I were to compare Volson as a fourth round prospect versus Christian Mahogany, I think Mahogany's a much better player, and I think he can come in and beat him. Uh, Mason McCormick, I feel very similarly about it as well. He'll be 23 very soon. But we're saying fourth round for him, South Dakota State, small school, all of those things. I would take it in the fourth round. Now, there's a couple other guys here I'm going to highlight for where they're projected at. Zach Zinter as well, I think could have been a much higher player, maybe a third rounder. Maybe he only lost a round by getting getting injured. Uh, Layden Robinson grades up pretty well for us. Fourth, fifth round, I'm into it. Matt Gonclaves in the fifth round. I'm into that as well. There's a couple other guys here. I just want to make sure I get to them. Hmm. Jarrett Kingston as a priority free agent. Sign me up for that. I think uh, you got a guy there that can potentially be a starter. And we're talking about an undrafted guy. If we come back a few years later and we say Jarrett Kingston's a starting offensive lineman in the league, I would not be surprised at that. Even though he's a six-year senior, he's probably a little bit older. Still, I think there's a uh, potential there for him to uh, overproduce his draft position, or, or in this case, undrafted position. There's a couple other guys I am interested in here and would like to see where they end up. Um, because I think the Bengals could take a day three guard for sure. So, I mean, like all these guys I'm neutral on and feel okay about. But if you could tell me I can get a Gon Claves in the fifth, if I can get Layden Robinson in the fifth, if I can get Zinter or Mason McCormick or Christian Mahogany in the fourth, those would be A-plus picks for me, and I would be completely with that for day three. Now, moving on to center, Jackson Powers Johnson pointing right at us. We did a film review on him when we thought it might have been a chance it is now projected in a lot of ways that he's going to go much much later i don't know much much later but second round uh more than likely not as high as we originally projected so the bengals have ted karras there solid starting center good dude we all love him last year of his deal they could draft a center that could either play guard early in his career i think a lot of these guys could at the top of this list and then move into center as needed and I'm high on all these guys, especially in the first. I think it's a really good center class. First four or five for sure. Graham Barton listed as a first round pick. And I tell you what, even at 18, he grades really high for us at tackle. He played tackle at Duke. He looks like a guard or center. You can play all those at 32 inch and 32 and 7 eighths inch arms. That's a guy that can play left guard year one, beat out Cordell Volson, and be your future Pro Bowl, multi Pro Bowl potential center and i think he's probably worth that pick maybe if you trade back maybe there's a trade back scenario where we talk about graham barton a little bit more i could see the steelers being in on him at 20. jackson powers johnson we did a review of him i really like jackson powers johnson i think he can be a 
powerful, nasty center and or guard. A little bit over aggressive at times. Uh, again, both these guys are 21 years old. Graham Barton will be 22 very shortly after the draft, but you should get a full rookie season of Jackson Powers Johnson being 21, which I like, meaning upside should be on in his in his favor. Uh, third year junior, 6'3", 328. You don't find centers that big too often. I think the next heaviest center in this class is 315. Zach Frazier, the third guy here. Round two, I really like Zach Frazier as well. Put on, what game was it? Penn State? where he's just absolutely throwing guys around all the time? Or was it Pittsburgh? Ah, damn it. There's a few games where Zach Frazier is absolutely dominating in a fun way. He may get some holding calls in his career, but, man, I really, really like him. I think he's going to be a high-end uh, starting center. He's got a good, really good shot. And I, I, we're talking second round. I wouldn't be against it at all. See, and I'm green on these guys in the interior. Maybe I'm less as less harsh on the tackle class or than I was on the tackle class because we're talking most of these guys are second rounders. So if the Bengals do go, let's say Byron Murphy in round one, and you get to round two, and your options are uh Patrick Paul and Roger Rosengarten and Blake Fisher, all guys I like for the third round. But if those are your options at 49, but instead you're faced with, I mean, let's say Jackson Powers Johnson's or Zach Frazier or some of the interior offensive linemen like Cooper Beebe are available, I think those guys have Pro Bowl potential. I'd much rather just say, fine, screw it. We're going to get a good interior offensive lineman rather than forcing and rolling a 50-50 dice on an offensive tackle in round two. I think these guys are, to me, like Jackson Powers Johnson, Pro Bowl upside of like a 75%. Cooper Beebe, similar, like 75%. Zach Frazier, 70%. Like, I think you've got a good shot of landing those guys rather than taking a 50-50 roll of the dice on a Blake Fisher or a, uh, a Patrick Paul, which tackle is more valuable and rarer. I understand that. I get it. Third, fourth round for the next guy, Tanner Borderline, a guy who tested extremely well. His tape isn't as good. Maybe that's why he's sitting here his third, fourth round. He's the smallest of these guys with 31 and a half inch arms, and he'll be 22 uh, as the season kicks off. So about average for those things. But we're talking third, fourth round, pick 97. Hmm. But pick, what do they pick, 114 in the fourth? Fourth round pick, I'm for it. If you want to spend a fourth round pick on a future center that is an elite athlete, I'm not going to argue against it in any way, shape, or form. Such a brand, Van Pran Granger. I've just been calling him Van Pran. He's actually got another name at, at the end of that. I like him, but I don't love him. Uh, I do think he fits a lot of what the Bengals have drafted in the past. I don't know if that's a good thing. So he's 22 and a half years old. He's got the short arms, 30, 31 and 3 eighths inch arms. I don't think he moves all that well, but big school, lots of starts. I think the Bengals would be into someone like that. Bo Limmer, I am out on Bo Limmer here, especially in the fourth round. I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he's big enough. Uh, I don't think he moves well enough. Hunter Norzad, fourth round. Nah, I'm not into it as, as for the similar reasons. I think he's a developmental player at already 24 years old. I'm not into that. No, thank you. Uh, Kingsley. I was going to try and say your name. Egukun? Yeah, I struggle with these. Is anybody else? I'm, I'm going to say I'm indifferent because uh, I didn't feel either way when watching his film. Matt Lee, on the other hand, fifth, sixth round. Oh, yeah. Give me that. Matt Lee, I think, looks like an athlete. Really good in pass pro. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets drafted much higher than this. If we come and a lot of people are like, who's this Matt Lee guy drafted in the third round? I'm saying, yeah. He, when I saw him on film watch against Braden Fisk, you guys watched it. We watched it in real time. We're, and I said, man, this, this center for Miami is doing a tremendous job on Braden Fisk. And then I looked it up afterwards. People were sending me who he was. And it's like, oh, yeah, this guy's a uh, four-year starter that hasn't given up a sack in two and a half years. It's like, oh, yeah, I see the production profile now. Looks great. I'm into it. Andrew Rain being the last one there as a I – mean, I'm indifferent. But if you get to the sixth, seventh round – that's completely fine with me. Charles Turner, I'm more of a yes on that in the seventh priority free agent range. I think the Bengals had meetings with Jalen Sundell, also North Dakota State, as a priority free agent. I think it's a good center class. Wouldn't be surprised if the top four guys were all good players. And then give me chances on Matt Lee on day three, maybe Charles Turner. Absolutely late. Maybe he can develop into a solid backup player. Uh, yeah, it's a good interior offensive line class. Much more value here between the guards and the centers. Than there, are in, uh, than there are with the tackles in rounds two, three, and four. 
it goes much deeper for these guys than it does for the tackles, as expected. Jumping next to the defensive tackle class, and yes, I've skipped over quarterbacks. I've skipped over uh, safeties and linebackers when I do this. Defensive ends is a weird one, and I'm skipping over them right now. Uh, there are some guys in the first round you'd consider, and they could t- you could always take a defensive end. First, second, third, fourth, fifth round, like no one would care because you have to take defensive ends all the time. I don't feel as confident outside of the top four guys because I haven't watched them as in-depthly. I started with the positions that made the most sense, whether it be defensive tackle, offensive tackle, guards and centers and tight ends, wide receivers and running backs and corners. That, sure, would I take Dallas Turner? Would I take Leatu Latu? I would. Jared Verse, maybe. Uh, so really after that, it gets, you know, you, you're not going to get expertise from me. So let's just jump into the defensive tackles here and go from there. And the number one guy that it is believed across the board is Byron Murphy. And I know I love Johnny Newton. Most of you love Johnny Newton. Bengals fan base loves Johnny Newton. A lot of evaluators love Johnny Newton. Watch other shows, watch other draft uh, and, and <clears throat> draft analysis shows, watch other evaluators and analysts from around the internet. And there's some of these guys taking Johnny Newton in in top 10 still. And I'm with them. I think Johnny Newton is going to be a perennial Pro Bowl player. Now, why do teams like Byron Murphy more? We're not talking about a guy who's got significantly more size, right? We're talking about a guy who, the only real difference is, played at Texas, which was a great school at the end, you know, this past year, was had a really good year. But at the same time, he played nose tackle. He shouldn't have. But I think teams are overvaluing that. And I think teams are looking at it and saying, hey, he can defend the run. Look at this. I mean, yeah, if you're going to, you're not going to ask him to do these things. And then watch the Iowa State game, right? Where they teed off on Byron Murphy and destroyed him. Having said all of that, that's me being negative because I think Johnny Newton's better. I think Byron Murphy is completely worth a first round pick. I have no problem with taking Byron Murphy at 18. I think he's going to be a very good player. Talking about a guy who's not even 22 yet. Byron Murphy and Johnny Newton are like a week apart on birthdays. They're both 21.6 years old on the draft day. They are young. They are explosive athletes. They should be very good pass rushers. I think Newton's a much better pass rusher already. I think he's got better moves. I think he finishes better. I think Byron Murphy may be a little bit better against the run right now and play with better leverage. Great. I would take either one of these guys slam dunk. Like to me, you say Johnny Newton, there's a chance second for a second. You're saying he could be there at 40? Trade up whatever it takes. Give me Fuanga at 18. Give me Newton at 40 by trading up, and I will lose my shit. I will think that's the best draft possible to start this for the Bengals. I absolutely love both players. I will take Byron Murphy at 18, don't get me wrong. But Johnny Newton, to me, is the prize, and he's the jewel of this draft class in the defensive tackle room. Um, so however you can get him and however you can end up with him, let's do it. Chris Jenkins, we did a video on him. There's some upside remaining there. I would not take him in round two. And I I believe I said that at the time, that it was like, eh, second, third. You know, maybe their options in the third round. Maybe it'd be a disaster scenario where their options in round two. This is a this is one of my worst case scenarios if the Bengals come away with Chris Jenkins in round two after going, let's say Troy Fatanu and then Chris Jenkins. I'd be like, oof. <laughs> we gotta look this is not what I what I was hoping for. Uh Ruka Roro, on the other hand, second round, no, I'm not into it at 49. In the third, I am. I'm into Ruka Roro in the third. I'm gonna give him a yellow because I don't like him in the second, but I like him in the third. Michael Hall Jr., would I take him at 49? I would. It would have to be a scenario where a board falls a certain way because I don't think he's a slam dunk pick at 49. For a few reasons. And I know the film review made it sound like that, that I could really see the upside and I love uh, his upside. All of that is true. But when you're a strictly pass rusher that doesn't have the production as a run defender, it puts you in a bucket with guys that have not become full time players. So if we're saying at best, he is a pass rushing specialist, interior pass rusher, can I take that guy at 49? I don't think I can. I want more upside, and I think this class offers it in other ways. I don't want to do that there. I want to go back and say this is – no, okay, hang on. No, I do – I will stay with Green because in the third round I will take him and be okay with him being a rotational player. That's where it took Zach Carter. Uh, if you can get him at 80, I like it. 
I would not take him at 49. I just want to be clear on that. Mason Smith, second, third. This is another one that scares the shit out of me. You cannot take him at 40, Bengals. Don't take him at 40. And in fact, 80, I would be, I would stomach it, but I would not think that's a good pick either. Uh, I this this scares me. He, yeah, he's only 21 and a half years old, but guys like Mike Halls are not even 21 yet. It's young at the top. The oldest guy we get to is Braden Fisk, who in the third round, yeah, he's 24 years old, may not get much better. Third round, though, pick 80, six year senior. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy's been in college a long time. What was that? Was it Van Wilder? Was in college forever? I would take Braden Fisk still in the third round. I think if you're spending in your history, Picks on um, like Brandon Thompson and Zach Carter. I think Braden Fisk is a better prospect than either one of those guys. And if he's there at 80, I'm for it. But even more, I would have ranked higher, I think, because of his age, because of the upside being a year and a half year younger. Brandon Dorless, I think, could potentially be a very good interior pass rusher. Brandon Dorless is one round later than Mike Hall, but three years older. Is that right? Two years older than uh, Mike Hall. Dorless is 23 already. So, I guess he's not that young either. I still would take him in round three. Makai Wingo for round three, four. Oh, yeah, I'm into that one. You're telling me pick 97 or the fourth round pick, 6'2", 284. Uh, ran a 4.85. All these guys are athletic at the top. All running sub fives until we get to the next guy here. And Makai Wingo is only 21 years old, just turned 21 recently, I would say in April. Uh, yeah, I would take him in at 97, no doubt about it. And you're saying there's a chance for him there in the fourth round? I'm into it. Tavondre Sweat now listed as a fourth round pick, even with the issues, even with the current uh, DWI, I believe it was, I would take him in the fourth. I think he has upside to be a very, very, very good nose tackle. Uh, and it's in the fourth round, it's worth it to take that risk, I believe. You're going to take risks in a lot of ways for a lot of these players. Uh, I'm willing to do that in the fourth round for Tavondre Sweat. I'm indifferent on Gabe Hall. There was times he looked really good. There was times he looked absolutely terrible. I would just rather avoid it. Guys that like, guys in the yellow for me are guys where I kind of would rather someone else to draft him. You know, like if someone else drafts Gabe Hall five picks before the Bengals in the fourth round, I'll go, okay, now I don't have to make that decision. I don't have to worry about it. I <clears throat> I now would rather that happen for guys like that that are in the yellow. Dwayne Carter, I think could be a good interior pass rusher. He's 23 already. This class is just so old sometimes. We're getting to them. You see the young guys get ranked higher. That's just how it is. The young guys are going to fly off the board. And they're going to be chip, you're, you're going to be picking between a bunch of uh, 23 and 24-year-olds. So Dwayne Carter in the fourth, fifth round. Leonard Taylor we did a video on. I thought he'd be a third-round pick in the fourth, fifth round. And he's played some nose. He's had some really good run defense production. He's not even 22 years old yet. He's one of the younger guys of this next group. I would be in on Leonard Taylor, fourth, fifth round, for sure. Uh, I'm going to highlight some other guys here that I think are, are good. Fabian Lovett, very good run defender, six-year senior. That could be a problem. He's 24.4 already. We're talking fifth six. If I'm saying six round for run defender, nose tackle type, I'm in on that one. I'm in on Christian Boyd as well in the sixth round. Another nose tackle type, Jordan Jefferson, nose tackle type, sixth, seventh round. I'm into all these guys. A couple others. McKinley Jackson is a surprise here. A lot of people thought he'd be potentially a second, third round pick out of Texas A&M. He was a nose tackle. You can see it on film. He is up and down consistently. And then you get the rumblings that that's just who he is as a person too. I can see why he's listed as a sixth, seventh round pick. But man, I tell you, I mean, that's where nose tackles should be drafted. They should be fourth through seventh round picks. Fourth at the highest for the best guys, like you see with uh, Tavondre Sweat. So McKinley Jackson in the sixth, seventh, I'm in on that. I would do it. I like Tyler Davis. He played a lot of nose. He's only 6'2", 301 with 31-inch arms. I don't think he can be a nose, especially with the wing of just 75, wingspan of 75 inches, and being already 23 and a half years old. I think he can help you. I think he'd be a rotational player, but I don't think he's a starting nose tackle in the NFL. Juwan Briggs can play all up and down the line for Cincinnati. We're saying seventh round of priority free agent. Yes, I'm into it. Same with Evan Anderson out of FAU. 22 years old, just turned 22. Uh, the one guy that the Bengals brought in that didn't grade out well at, uh, at all, and he's a late round nose tackle priority free agent is Justin Rogers. Like I'd rather just avoid him if I could at all costs, but there is a lot of guys here that are matching up with need, with value for the Bengals. The only guys I really don't want for where they're listed is Chris Jenkins and Mason Smith. Those guys scare me for second rounds. Ruka Roro in the second round. I don't want to, I don't want to have to do that. Gabe Hall in the fourth. Don't want to have to do it. But the rest of the guys I'm into, and there's a lot of day three guys 
that I think the Bengals could even double dip if they end up with Byron Murphy in the first round, come back in the fifth, sixth, seventh round and pick up Lovett, Christian Boyd, Jordan Jefferson, McKinley Jackson, or Juwan Briggs, Evan Anderson. Yeah, I, I think that's the best way. And I wouldn't be surprised if they double dip at defensive tackle on draft night, especially uh, for day three with a lot of guys there. Okay, the next one being cornerback, and it's going to be very similar to defensive end, but I'm actually going to go through it because I think there is a chance. Not only do Bengals need a corner four, I think they could be faced with a scenario where uh, at pick 18, a corner's there. And actually, Jeff Hobson of Bengals.com had them taking Nate Wiggins out of Clemson at 18, who is a very good player, but tested, I mean, uh, weighed in at like 170. So we'll see in a second exactly what those measurements were uh, so it should be talked about because i think quinion mitchell and terry and arnold are very 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 good prospects in fact for as much as been talked about the top of this wide receiver class with three studs and then a, a bunch of other guys that may go in the first round the corner class is so strong at the top i just think that we're looking at so many tackles and so many wide receivers that are going to go in the top 15 that you could probably get a top 12 player at a corner whether it's mitchell and arnold and see him at 18 and be like, yeah, he's the best player available. Why wouldn't I? And they've got Terry and Arnold number one. Dane Brugler does. And we're talking about a guy who just turned 21 years old. So when you're watching the film, it's 20. He's got a guy that's aggressive, physical tackler. You can blitz with him. Um, he is very sound, very technique sound. Is he the, the fastest dude? No, he ran a four or five flat. But I think athleticism-wise, he clears what we're looking for there. He just may not have the blazing straight line speed. But again, he was 20 years old when he did this. Sometimes I give those guys a little bit of credit in saying that, well, they're not full-grown men yet, right? They're not there yet, but coming from Alabama, he probably is and probably should be. I would take Terry and Arnold at 18. I think we need to talk about it more, which is why I wanted to go with a corner uh, section of this of this show, because not only do I think Arnold is worth it, he's going to end up being a top-10 player on our board on the spreadsheet. Quinion Mitchell, I feel the exact same way about. And yes, he's a fifth-year senior, so he's a little bit older. He is 22.8 years old already. But we're talking ball skills and intelligence and anticipation. And then you're like, okay, he played at Toledo, though. Okay, you bring him to the senior bowl, and he's the best guy on the field. And he looks the part. And then you bring him to the combine, and you're like, whoo, that dude is smooth. Look at his ball skills on the deep, uh, on the deep passes. Good in zone, good in man. His profile tested like an elite athlete at the combine production like an elite athlete this is how you end up with a number one corner each one of these guys are corner one potential and for me the Bengals don't have a corner one and I know Cam Taylor Britt is very good but I think he's more like T Higgins so like when you have T Higgins and Tyler Boyd I made the argument if you didn't know me at the time that they don't have a Jamar Chase and it's true we can see that now three years later oh yeah Jamar Chase is different than those guys those guys are good and we like them uh but if Mike Hilton is the Tyler Boyd and Cam Taylor Britt is the uh, T Higgins. I think these two guys could be your Jamar Chase at corner. And the only reason they'd even be there is because this class is so heavy on the offensive side. And I think teams are drafting offense first, whether that's offensive tackle, wide receiver. Those are more premium positions now than corner. And I think corner could get pushed down. I do expect these guys to be gone. But if they're there is when the discussion starts. Now, Nate Wiggins here ran a four two eight at 173 pounds but we've got him first second you're saying he goes between what 25 and 45 with this we don't pick there but i'd be interested in it would i be interested at 18 that's who jeff hobson had him taking he is a very good player we're talking a guy who's 20.6 he's the youngest of all these guys when you're watching him he was 19 and just turned 20 during the season like for a guy that small he's going to put on weight he's going to get a little bit bigger runs a 428 the bengals Look at Cam Taylor Britt. Look at DJ Turner, who I didn't mention a minute ago, who they really like and still do like. But you need a fourth corner, and you may be presented with an opportunity to upgrade. Sometimes you just take it. Nate Wiggins fits the profile of what they just drafted with DJ Turner. Similar size. Wiggins is 6'1", though. So he's got the frame to add weight and end up being 185, no problem. Always be a thin dude, but with the height and the length that you look for. Um, 428 is what they've been drafting at corner. It's what they've been drafting at defensive back other than Jordan Battle. I wouldn't be surprised if they were very, very high on Nate Wiggins. And remember last year, they were high on Emmanuel Forbes. So the size may not scare them off completely. Cooper DeGene, first, second round, third year junior, again, 21 years old, still young, ran a 4-4-4 at his pro day, tested like an elite athlete at his pro day. His coverage grades, when you look at PFF, 
are in the 90th percentile and above. Guys that have 90th percentile athleticism, 90th percentile production grades end up being very, very good players or have a very, very good shot of reaching that and being multi-time Pro Bowl players. Cooper DeGene could be that. And the only issue why I would have any hesitation with him is because he's more of a gadget dude. Like, and maybe that's the limitations of, of the way we are all viewing him. And maybe he can just be a boundary corner because he's an elite athlete and you just stick with him there. But I think he's going to be best as a guy who can come into the box a little bit. That can blitz. That can play nickel and slot corner as well. Uh, so maybe you just draft him as a, hey, he's a hybrid do-it-all, but he's going to be a cornerback one type. Uh, those are rare guys. Those are rare guys that you'd be able to see that can do all of these things. And has shown it on tape as well. Next guy. Kool-Aid McKinstry, actually very, very good. Kool-Aid and Terry and Arnold were so good for Alabama. Uh, they've been spitting out corners for a long time, but these two look as good as any that they have put out. Uh, and he's 21 and a half years old, 5'11", 196, ran a 4'47", has 32-inch arms, the longest of any of this group that we've mentioned already, and a 75-inch wingspan, which is pretty good. Terry and Arnold with a 76-inch wingspan is the longest of this group. McKinstry is the better athlete. He moves better. He is a little bit more faster than Arnold. Smart, good in zone. I think he's going to be a very good player. All of these guys score very high for us on our spreadsheet. They could all have cornerback one potential. I would not take, I think I would not take Wiggins, DeGene, and McKinstry at 18. But if you're telling me for another team or in a trade back scenario, say the Bengals do trade back, the Bills want to come up and get Brian Thomas Jr. And we're there at 28, and either Wiggins, DeGene, or McKinstry are there. Yes, I'm into it. So I'm kind of like in, as a, a yellow because I don't like them in the first round for the Bengals at 18, but I think they're all really, really, really good players and good prospects. Uh, Mike Sanistro, I hope I'm saying that right, for Michigan. Very good nickel corner, as good of a nickel corner as you can find. Second round. I got to be out on him, even though he grades really well. And I agree that he's the next best guy. We cannot spend another pick in a slot guy, right? If, even if Mike Hilton is only one year left on his deal, Dax Hill presumed to be the backup and, and maybe groomed into that role to take over. You cannot draft it again. It makes it very, very tough to do so. Um, and I just can't see the Bengals being in on that, uh, you know, in the second round. He, on one hand, he seems like a Bengal pick. Like he looks like Mike Hilton. On the other hand, can you do it again? Can I be for it? I can't be for it. Ennis Rakestraw, I feel very similarly. Bengals uh, like their corners to be a little bit faster. He ran a 4-5-1 at the combine. Well, I said that's okay for Terry and Arnold. For Rakestraw, it's a little bit different because he'll be 22 as a rookie. He's a year older, uh, and he doesn't look that fast on tape to me. Solid profile, solid overall player. I have the same feeling with TJ Tampa. Looks very good on tape. Honestly, I like him. Second, third round. Uh, second round, I'm out at 49 on TJ Tampa. Ran a 4-5-8. It's more like second round I'm out, third round for Tampa I'm interested in. Four, five, eight, though, was tough at that position to be that slow and, and to run that. Moving on, though, Andrew Phillips, again, I think is a nickel or a slot guy. And we're talking second, third round, so I'm out on Andrew Phillips in the second, third. I think that's too high for him for a guy that I think is going to be in the slot. Kamari Lassiter ran a four six four. Again, I'm out. I think the Bengals are out. They don't take guys that slow normally. Max Melton, I like him a ton. 439. 22-year-old. A lot of projecting him as a day one slot corner. Having said that, I do think he has enough of the frame and size and ball skills with his 32-inch arms, 76-inch wingspan. With that, with that speed and athleticism, I think he can be an outside corner. And I wouldn't take that away from him early. I would not take him at 49. But if he's there in the third, then I would, which is why I'm putting a green on him because I think he could be more of a third-round pick. I'm feeling it that way. And I'm going to go over now a few of the other guys. I haven't gotten to the, all of the second. Uh, maybe that was the second. Maybe I haven't gotten out to all the third and fourth wave guys here. But Jarvis Brownlee in the third or fourth, I'm into that, especially if we're talking like pick 97. I think he can come in and be a, uh, be a fourth corner for you. Renardo Green, fourth-round pick to Cameron Richardson. Fourth, fifth, I'm into it. Cam Hart, big, strong, physical outside corner. They could use a little bit of that because they struggled to tackle last year. He's 6'3 and ran a 4'5 flat. I like it. Josh Newton out of TCU. I would take him even though he is much, much older. He'll be 24. Kyrie Jackson in the fifth. We're talking fifth-round picks here. 
So I'd be all over it. Dwight McLaughlin, the Bengals had a visit with him. He's only 22, even though he's a four-year senior. Uh, Kalen King is an interesting guy out of Penn State. At 5'11", 190, ran a 4.55, and he's 21 years old, so he's one of the younger of the of the late guys. I like Jerry and Jones out of Florida State. He comes out really high, even though he's going to be 23 years old as a rookie. And then you got the guys like out of Toronto that I know nothing about, other than the guy had a lot of interceptions, and he's coming from Toronto, so he must have made a play there. Must have uh, been a uh, a good player there that I'd be interested in. So I'm highlighting a few guys here. I think it gets scary for the Bengals in round two, maybe potentially even round three, which is why I haven't mocked them a corner too often in those rounds because the Bengals like them fast. They're rarely taking these guys that are running four, four, eight to four, five, two uh, in round two, right? Round three. I don't think they'll do that. So unless it's a slot guy and I don't think they need any slot guys, which are, it seems like the, is going to be the bulk of these guys. Now there's a lot of guys I don't know enough about. I don't know, know enough about DJ James or Kalen Carson or uh, Nehemiah Pritchett. I know on our profiles, they score really low because of their production. The Bengals have been 50-50 on that at corner, so maybe they could be a pick I have to watch after the draft. But there are more. So I think if you're not taking a guy at 18, basically is what I'm getting to, I don't think you go second, third round. I think it then comes to the fourth round where we're looking at Renardo Green, Cameron Richardson, Cam Hart, Josh Newton, uh, Kyrie Jackson. Like that makes sense to me, fourth, fifth round pick. And I think those guys could be solid corner fours, upgrade from where we had DJ Ivy last year. And you go with DJ Turner, Cam Taylor, Britton, Mike Hilton as your starters with hopefully DJ Ivy gets back and uh, Dax Hill as the backup there as well. You know, so, so let's say Dax Hill and DeCameron Richardson as a fourth round pick are your backups at corner. I think you're in fine shape there. Those are guys that can come in and start and compete for you and uh, maybe have a little bit of upside, even though most of this class in the second half there are 23 years old. Most of these guys I'm highlighting here are already 23 or close to 23 as rookies. That's how this class is playing out for 2024 year. That gives us a lot of options. I think corner is interesting at 18 in a lot of ways. So that was it. Hopefully I got to every player you have questions about. If you need, or if I skimmed over them or skipped over them too quickly and you have questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, that's the process of, hey, I like this player, but I don't like him where he's projected to go. Or I really like him if he's projected to go that much later. So it's a, I wanted to go through that and I thought it was, uh, very, it was good for me to get it out and figure it out and be like, I could take anyone's rankings and say, yeah, I like I l like what you got or I don't like it if that guy's going to go that early. I do like it if that guy's going to go that late part of the process. And Friday's episode will be as we try to build the Bengals board. What does that look like? How do we get ready for pick 18 with one week away? That's a fun process. This is what the Bengals are doing right now, right? All the NFL teams are getting together. They're hammering it. They're figuring out what their board looks like for when they're going to be on the clock. You pick 18, you better have 18 players that you like to draft at that spot. And then you have a few others that maybe if there's a trade back scenario, you can uh, feel comfortable with who you have. But we're going to build the 18 players that we would be. And I guess it doesn't have to be 18 because four quarterbacks are going to go. That's for Friday's episode. We'll worry about it then. Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. Till next time. Who day? Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.